In this video, you'll be learning about this topic. Hey guys, what's your thoughts on lightning? Very interesting, of course, with the stuff that Jack Mallers now is doing a strike. Lightning and the other second layers on Bitcoin are food for the next phase, right? This will bring the uh, transaction part to this uh, store value thing that Bitcoin is right now. And uh, it will make very cheap, fast transactions possible. And I think it's the next thing. And it's big. Actually, if you think about it, you need Bitcoins to be part of this transaction network. So not having Bitcoin is a real disadvantage. I could envision a world where you can have a credit card once you deposit the Bitcoin as a collateral, and then you can buy at the supermarkets. And if you don't have Bitcoin, you don't get the credit card. You can help buy at the supermarkets or buy certain cars or travel. Or So it becomes sort of, you have to have Bitcoin. Otherwise, you can't be part of the economy. And it's very akin to... Like 100 years ago, you had to have land, right? If you don't have land, then you have nothing. You can put yourself to work, but you would never earn the money, never enough money to make a good living. You need land. And that, of course, was uh, Thomas Piketty, his book, The Capital uh, Book, was the big socialist movement against it. But if you don't have land, you are nothing. And that we might have a new world where if you don't have Bitcoin, you cannot be part of the Lightning Network. You cannot have a credit card, you cannot earn an interest because you will be uh, at the mercy of the central bank digital currencies with a negative interest rate. So yeah, you, you better get some. That's how I envision the end game. You know, if you look at Bitcoin from an engineering standpoint, it's not really ever going to scale if you can, everyone's using the main chain. And so we kind of need a way to get the throughput of transactions to carry global commerce. And there's really no other technology that I've seen. You know, you've got side chains, but that's kind of centralized. You need federations, you, you need trusted parties, essentially, to make that work. And so Lightning's the best shot we've, I've seen so far. And, you know, it, it's still in its, its early stages, but the performance on this stuff is just so great. And, like, I was thinking, you know, here's one implementation, which is Jack Moller's strike startup and that they convert whatever currency you're sending maybe it's us dollars and i'm i'm sending euros over to plan b it converts to bitcoin and it, it zaps along the lightning within milliseconds and it does a forex transaction to euro and the whole thing's instant right and uh, it occurs to me this is like strike could have used mongodb because the both sides of that transaction is strike converting the forex back to the two customers on their Stripe apps. And so they chose to use Lightning Network as a proof of concept of how this works. What would make it really interesting is it's not Strike on both ends and it zapped across and it was another company, another bank, another payment provider that came in and converted back to euros for plan B. And then you got interoperability between essentially users that are built on the Bitcoin network, the Lightning network, and it's not just this monolithic one app, and that decentralizes this. Normally, we see as this one payment provider, like whether it's a TransferWise or any number of their competitors. And so I find that very exciting. It's almost like the DNA of Bitcoin. Whatever it touches, it decentralizes. And so, um, yeah, it, it's, I think it's very exciting. It's incredibly exciting right now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? Let us know in the comments section below.